In 1935, I wonder who initially had the grit and unmitigated gall, the genius, the gumption, and guts to recognize our people needed a seat at the table and answer the call. In a photo, I counted 19 assembled to accomplish this deed. A group of men became super friends and formed their own Justice League. Some people would say that they should pull themselves up by their bootstraps. I don't want to hear that crap. Simple math, after slavery ended in Texas, in just 70 years, we significantly closed the wealth gap. If in Texas, slavery ended in 1865 on 619, and the chamber was founded in 1935, see what I mean? You don't see what I mean. I mean, it's almost insulting to listen to everyone so about their green, about their dreams and income streams and getting to the cream and their whole team gets the bag, gets the coins, gets the purse. Whatever works. Grady Houston Black Chamber of Commerce did it first. And for all that it's worth, salt of the earth. And this is nothing but the truth. Not only did these men do business, but when they did business, they did it in suits. Remember when refinement made you timeless and integrity was important. In the distance, a vision crystal clear without distortion. We will continue to educate and grow businesses for the community in the community we serve. The pinnacle of poetry per my penmanship, if I were to put it in words. Together, we can do anything I bear witness. In God we trust, but to everyone else, let's just keep it business. Let us reach back into the wards, woods, parks, gardens, glens, gates, and villages. Let us show the entire city why membership has its privileges. Into the future we go with fierceness. We must tell our kids, stop trying to be the plug. Control the power grid. To our membership, our partners, our women in business, this is a pinnacle pledge and we shall continue pursuit to find exceptional individuals that represent the culture as candidates for the Houston Black Leadership Institute. As I propose to bring this composition to a close, I pose a sentiment to you so sincere. On one hand, we feel like black excellence has arrived, but on the other hand, we feel like it's been here. With the power vested in me, outright forth in favor of and intentional, that we, the Greater Houston Black Chamber of Commerce, recognize and celebrate those that have become the pinnacle. Hello there and good evening and welcome to the 27th annual Pinnacle Awards presented by the Greater Houston Black Chamber of Commerce. I'm Mia Gradney. And I'm Len Cannon. Get ready for an amazing evening of celebration as we honor some of the best and most accomplished black owned businesses in Houston. Tonight's program is live streaming on the Greater Houston Black Chamber's social media platforms, YouTube, Facebook, and Instagram, as well as on KHOU 11's sister station, KTBU Quest, Texas 55. This year's pinnacle theme is excellence has arrived. Black businesses that take the lead. So tonight we're going to bask in the great accomplishments of some of Houston's most successful black owned businesses, as well as some incredible people and organizations that give back to the community. We've already seen an incredible performance from Seven the Poet. Now let's kick things off by hearing from GHBC leadership interim president Carol Guess. Good evening, and thank you all for joining us for the 27th annual Pinnacle Awards, where we recognize outstanding Black-owned businesses and community leaders in Houston. I'm Interim President Carol Guess. Since the Chamber's inception, we continue to help Black-owned businesses gain access to resources and opportunities to level the playing field. We serve as an advocate for business owners and the Black community at large and we partner with major corporations, government entities, and other organizations, making them aware of the vast offering of talent and potential new customers present within Houston's African-American community. Black-owned businesses generate over $150 billion in revenue in the United States. Unfortunately, contributing billions of dollars to the nation's economy is not enough to narrow the significant wealth gap that exists in our community we must focus on creating generational wealth where we each build upon the foundation set by those before us. Our legacy truly is our economy. Tonight, we are highlighting some of the people and businesses in Houston that get it. 
Not only are they developing thriving companies, but as they keep growing, they are providing a platform for the next generation to take up the mantle and run with it. This year's theme of excellence has arrived, Black businesses take the lead, is a nod to the fact that all eyes are upon us. Our community has always set the trends. Now it's time to show what we can really do. So for the next few minutes, we want you to celebrate with us, but also be inspired by tonight's honorees in hopes that their stories will motivate each of us to fly even higher in the pursuit of our own greatness. Enjoy the evening. Next, we'll have a word from the Greater Houston Black Chamber Chair of the Board, Niles Dillard. Good evening. I'm Niles Dillard, Chair of the Board of Directors of the Greater Houston Black Chamber and President of Superior Video Productions. I'm excited to be a part of this celebration of Houston's top black owned businesses as part of the 27th Annual Pinnacle Awards. Right now in our history, we're seeing an appreciation of black culture in a way we've never seen it before. And that presents a unique opportunity. It's my belief that in order to surge forward and take advantage of our current reality, we need to focus on these three pillars, perseverance, social movement, and partnership. Being a black entrepreneur is already a masterclass in perseverance, but we must continue finding creative ways to address new challenges and not give up or give in to adversity. Likewise, we cannot turn a blind eye to the social movements happening in our community. And working together in partnership will enable us to climb higher faster than going at it alone. It is my hope that as we look at tonight's honorees, we will draw from them inspiration and see them as examples of resilience, excellence, and brilliance that we can emulate in our own lives and businesses. Thank you for your support and enjoy the rest of the evening. Minister Chris Johnson of Good Hope Missionary Baptist Church brings us the invocation. Hello, good evening. My name is Minister Chris Johnson. I've been asked to give the prayer here on this evening for the Pinnacle Awards. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we bless your name on this evening and we say thank you. God, we thank you for all of the businesses that are gathered here on this evening. God, we thank you that not only that they have committed their businesses to you indeed, but they've also committed their businesses to you in service as well. God, we wanna thank you for all of the honorees here on this evening. God, we thank you for their commitment to excellence. We thank you for their commitment to business. We thank you for their commitment to our city and our state and our nation. But ultimately, God, we thank you for their commitment to you. Now, Father, uh, we wanna thank you for our honorees, those who understand that the most important part of business is not the balance sheet, but it's how you invest and pour back into others. God, we thank you and we love you. And it is in your son's name we pray, amen. We'd like to take a moment to remind you that throughout this program, you'll have an opportunity to participate in the silent auction. There are some truly incredible items up for bid. To check out the silent auction, just visit ghbcc.com slash pinnacle and click on the meals and auction button. The Chamber serves the black business community throughout the greater Houston area. And thanks to the support of elected officials, the organization has a voice in the local, state and federal government. Throughout the evening, we will hear from a few of them, starting with Mayor Sylvester Turner and Harris County Judge Lena Hidalgo. Hello, this is Houston Mayor Sylvester Turner. Every year, the Greater Houston Black Chamber Pinnacle Award recognizes leading African-American entrepreneurs for their success in business and their positive impact on the communities and industries they serve. This year, the GHBC is celebrating its 27th annual celebration of black business excellence with the theme of excellence has arrived. Black businesses take the lead. As our city continues to recover from the economic challenges, brought on by the pandemic, it is critical for black owned businesses to take the lead. Congratulations to this year's Pinnacle and Upstart Award honorees. This award reflects your commitment and dedication to your business and is proof that you will go far beyond your personal success as an entrepreneur. I also want to congratulate and commend GHBC for helping its partners and members navigate Houston's large, diverse population and industries 
and for recognizing the many attributes and qualities of Black-owned small businesses. Thank you, and congratulations once again. Thank you to the Greater Houston Black Chamber, to all of you who are here this evening, and of course, congratulations to all the honorees. First, I have to admit, last year, during a very difficult time, you all and the Greater Houston Black Chamber brought some light our way. I can't tell you how much it meant amidst everything to be honored with the Mickey Leland Public Service Award, to have an award bearing his name and from this group. That meant a lot to me, so thank you. And I'm thrilled that this year's honoree is our very own Harris County Clerk, Tanisha Hudspeth. I am incredibly proud of her work throughout the years in Harris County and now leading her office. And all of our Pinnacle Award winners, that is what tonight is about. That is what your work is about, is about excellence and achievement, about service, about lifting up others who come after us. All of these businesses are examples of perseverance, are examples of fight, are examples of making sure that we give back. And you don't just give back through the work that you do. You don't just give back by lifting all boats through the economic impact you have on your community, but you give back by setting an example for so many other entrepreneurs, for young people. So I want to thank you for doing that. To you, the business leaders, to you, the honorees, and to the Greater Houston Black Chamber and every leader there, thank you for shaping what the future of this community is, which is one where we celebrate diversity where we have opportunity for diverse businesses and diverse leaders, where we admit that we need more of that, and that's why we stick together to make it happen. Congratulations, and thank you. Greetings, everyone. I am Robin Alicott, Mayor of Missouri City. I'm also a business owner and a business partner and a consumer to many companies across this region. So I know firsthand that the past two years have been challenging for businesses across this nation and the world. Owners and managers have been focused on the pandemic, on politics, and on competing to, the, to provide the best products and customer service to the people who purchase our products and services. These challenges demand that the companies change their service models and work even harder to bring in the revenues and build on their progress. Unfortunately, as we know, many businesses had to close their doors due to the pandemic and the shifts in the economy. And those of us who survived the struggles are still working overtime to be successful. So tonight's Pinnacle Award winners are very important to our local economies and communities because they showcase the dedication and commitment these individuals have to making our community strong. Congratulations to the honorees and congratulations to the Greater Houston Black Chamber of Commerce. Your ongoing investment in the economy make us proud. Once again, thank you and may God bless you and keep you all safe. We would not be able to bring you tonight's celebration of these amazing businesses without the support of our very generous sponsors that understand the importance of supporting black owned businesses. Here are remarks from Ramel Mitchell of Microsoft. Hello, my name is Ramel Mitchell, Central US Corporate Citizenship Director for Microsoft. And on behalf of Microsoft, we are thrilled and excited about the outstanding work that's happening right here at the Greater Houston Black Chamber of Commerce. At Microsoft, our mission is to empower every individual and organization on the planet to achieve more. And organizations like this are doing just that. Every day, you're inspiring young people to pursue careers in science, technology. You're inspiring other entrepreneurs to innovate. You're helping drive digital skilling. And this is something that we all need as we think about our communities. So on behalf of Microsoft, thank you again. And we look forward to the, the great work yet to come. Tonight we are celebrating local businesses, but there are other individuals, companies and organizations that are instrumental to the culture, vitality and advancement of life here in the city of Houston. 
We are so pleased to shine the light on these honorees who embody excellence in our community. First is the Legends Award presented to Dr. Ruth Simmons, president of Prairie View A&M University. I didn't really know that I would pursue a career in education until really I got into graduate school. And I had the good fortune of graduating from Dillard and then getting fellowships to go to graduate school. Before that, it didn't really occur to me that I could do that. But I received a Danforth Fellowship, which allowed me to uh, go all the way through graduate school free. And then once I got into graduate school, I became socialized to the idea of uh, becoming a professor. And it was then that I determined that when I graduated, I would start my career in universities. All eyes are on you because of that history of skepticism about qualifications and the fact that you're in a fishbowl, that people notice everything you do, that they judge you constantly, not on the basis of whether or not you're as good as anybody else would be in the position, but on the basis of whether or not you're overturning their skepticism with regard to what African Americans do, can do. At first, when the idea was introduced to me, going to Prairie View, I, I laughed. Uh, because retirement is so wonderful. <laughs> and I couldn't imagine leaving retirement and doing a third presidency. It seemed so ridiculous to me until I thought about the students at Prairie View and the opportunity to serve them. And it seemed unworthy for me to say no when people had been so unstintingly generous to me. You know, I never imagined as a child growing up in Fifth Ward that I could ever be thought of as, as a legend. When I asked myself as a young person what I would do with my life, I thought I would become a maid like everybody else that I knew who was a woman. And yet good people put in my head that I was worth more than that. So to be a legend, to be honored uh, as such, as a part of this extraordinary program is deeply meaningful to me. It puts a punctuation mark on my life growing up in Houston, going away, proving myself, coming back, and trying to make a contribution. So I'm delighted to accept this and I'm greatly honored by it. I thank the Chamber um, profusely for including me in this program. Our next community award is the Excellence Award, which goes to Helen Stagg, President and CEO of Change Happens, a nonprofit organization that supports at-risk youth and underserved families in the Houston area. Change Happens is a community-based social service organization. We were founded in 1989. We're 31 years old. We are one of the largest black-founded, black-led organizations in the greater Gulf Coast region. We believe in a holistic approach to the work that we do. We believe our living our mission, which is to empower people to help themselves. So we have everything from after school and summer enrichment programs. We have teen pregnancy prevention programs. We work with HIV programs, prevention, testing, counseling. We work for people who have uh, experiencing homelessness. Uh, we work with young girls who are involved in the criminal justice system to provide wraparound and transitional services. We have one of the Navigator programs, only two in uh, Texas, one in 10 in the country, for helping people to locate affordable health insurance. We are involved in a number of programs, uh, including 
of finding affordable housing, economic redevelopment, uh, increasing services for children. We advocate on issues where African Americans are disproportionately affected in the education system, uh, in criminal justice, and with access to health care. So we have this broad, wide range of services that we offer, not just in Houston Harris County, but in 31 of the counties in Texas. One of the successes is that we are community place based. And as a community resident, we listen to the people that we work with. There's a traditional approach to want to take services in without hearing and listening to what is needed. So I think one of our strong suits from our very beginning was that we had the approach to listen to the community and to respond. I am humble by uh, receiving this award, but I accept it on more of the organization and the work that we do, not me personally. There's nothing of significance that I myself can do alone. It's this collaborative effort. It's the collaboration with the business community, other community-based organizations, other stakeholders, the team of people that we work with at our organization, the clients that we are there to serve. And so when, when anyone is recognized, and if I'm recognized, it's the recognition of all of those people. The Larry V. Green Advocate of the Year Award is named after the late Houston City Council member who had great influence in the black community and served as a forceful and effective advocate for minority owned businesses. This year's recipient is Jerome Love, founder and CEO of the Texas Black Expo. My name is Jerome D. Love, and I'm an entrepreneur. I've been in business since I was 19 years old. Starting out, it was rough. It was challenging for me. Lost a bunch of money. And through that process, I've, I've also learned a lot and made a little bit of money here and there. We founded the Texas Black Expo with a mission to help others that want to be entrepreneurs to be a success, because we believe that if you're going to build strong, sustainable communities, it starts and ends with having wealth and resources within the communities, and that starts and ends with having strong business. Businesses. My first business was a clothing line, and long to short, by the time I was 23, 24 years old, I was in the hole over $100,000. And I realized that that was primarily a result of just making some silly decisions. And I really wanted to help other aspiring entrepreneurs to be able to be a success. Because when you look at any of the negative statistics that face any underserved community, whether it be prison populations, high school dropout rates, disparities in healthcare, there's one commonality, and that's money, resources. When you don't don't have money, then all kinds of bad things can happen. So when you build businesses, you empower people to control and be able to choose their own destiny, and you can build the community as a whole. So that, that's really been my goal. The Texas Black Expo is, a lot of people think of it as just an event, but we are an organization that's here in the Houston and surrounding areas to support and undergird the community. We do all kinds of uh, workshops and seminars. Right now in the midst of COVID, we created a program called We All Eat. We were funded $10.6 million. And as of today's date, we have served over 800,000 meals to families in need in Fort Bend County. It's a dual or pronged impact of the program because while the individuals and the families get the meals, the money is going to about 25 five restaurants. So it's an economic stimulus for the restaurants, but a way to provide meals for the families. So that's one of our signature programs, which we're really proud of. Sometimes we don't have a voice, we don't have a seat at the table, but organizations such as the Greater Houston Black Chamber of Commerce ensure that our businesses have a voice. This is such an honor. It means more than the, the chamber anybody knows. Larry was a friend. He was my frat brother. He was one of our founding board members. And I would dare to say we wouldn't be here without Larry B. Green. So he was the epitome of a community servant. And uh, it's, it's just a tremendous honor to feel as though the work that we're doing is, is a way to honor his legacy because we wouldn't be here without him. 
The next recognition goes to Harris County Clerk Tanisha Hudspeth, who is the recipient of the Mickey Leland Public Leadership Award. An advocate for food security and health care for all, Mickey Leland was an impactful and beloved congressman and public servant. Ms. Hudspeth also embodies these traits. A lot of people know the county clerk's office because of elections. That dynamic has changed slightly, but most of my years I spent helping to educate and make sure that the process went well here in Harris County. So this past November, after the election that changed, after our interim clerk left, I was elected and took over all the other operations of the county clerk's office that most people don't know about. That includes a tremendous amount of public services. We also house the Harris County Archives, a wealth of knowledge of Harris County. And so when everybody asks, well, what does the county clerk do outside of elections? We record all the major events of constituents' lives. I'm the Harris County Clerk. I'm the first youngest woman, first African-American woman to serve in this role. I was just elected this past November 2020, and the way I kind of stepped into this role was most unconventional. Prior to that, I was the Chief Deputy of the office, and it served in the office for 15 years. Started as the Administrative Assistant and worked my way through county government. And so when the previous county clerk stepped down uh, due to health concerns in the middle of a global pandemic, I uh, went in my closet and said, am I gonna run for office in the middle of a pandemic before a presidential election? And that's exactly what happened. And I'm so happy that I don't, didn't look back and regret it. And so here I am. I started working with the chamber many years ago when myself and uh, four other young men here in the city created Houston Black Leadership Institute. And we worked closely with the chamber because the chamber supported this vision and mission that we were putting together to help bring forth young leaders and prepare them to go and blossom into the areas of their studies, into the areas of the community. It is a full circle moment for me. What this award means to me when I say full circle moment means all the work and intentionality that I put behind the service, learning, knowing what the needs of our community truly are, getting in the community, not just talking about it, but being someone of the community, doing the work um, by serving on the Urban League Board here in Houston and knowing what truly that's designed for. So now as a leader, I know how I need to show up now as elected county clerk. You do all of these roles, you handle all these roles in the office, but how does it better serve the folks that really need it, right? How do we serve everyone from the highest class to the lowest class of our constituents and make sure that the basis of that service is the same for everybody? So for me to receive award in the name of Mickey Leland, I don't ever know that I feel like I will measure up to his legacy but I sure will work and keep trying very hard to make our city and great county proud of what we are capable of. And uh, I think we show it each and every day, especially in times like these. KTSU Radio has been a staple in the Houston community for nearly 50 years. We're grateful to have the radio station elevate our voices. KTSU General Manager Ernest Walker accepts the Endurance Award. On behalf of KTSU, I think it's amazing that this historic station that we call KTSU, that is part of our community, built part of our community for 50 years, as being recognized for its contributions that it has made to our community for this period of time. KTSU was the first African-American FM station in Houston. And I think that in itself is very historic. Uh, especially in the times that we are in today. Also, it's the first station that ever introduced hip hop to Houston as well. From the Ghetto Boys and Lil James and all of them, they got their start right at KTSU. KTSU's is the voice into the African American community, a voice that they can trust, where we can bring them information regarding voting rights, regarding things that are happening in our community that they need to be aware of. So to me, KTSU is that outlet for the community. When we say KTSU 90.9, your community station, it really is all about community. First, I want to say thank you to 
the Greater Houston Black Chamber for this honor in trusting KTSU with this prestigious award. And if it wasn't for you and the work that you do, you know, we probably wouldn't be doing what we're doing. But I believe that as a community, we gotta work together. And this is such an honor. It takes teamwork in order to make these things happen. I believe that is the ingredients to making a impact in the community that we serve. One of the reasons the Black Chamber exists is to inspire and educate the next generation of black entrepreneurs, which is why this next honoree is so special. Lauren Ashley Alexander is the founder of the cosmetics company Too Bougie Beauty and the recipient of the Young Entrepreneur of the Year Award. The name of my company is Too Bougie Beauty, and I got the name Too Bougie from when I was bullied. Kids at school used to pick on me, and they would call me bougie, and just basically saying that I wasn't black enough, I didn't feel enough, and makeup was my way of coping with that, with that bullying, and it was my way of escaping and having way of self-expression. And so I created my makeup brand and turned a negative into a positive, and now I have two Bougie Beauty. We offer cosmetics, so lipsticks, highlighter palettes, eyeshadow palettes, and I also am a makeup artist as well. Too Bougie Beauty, we don't just focus on our formula. Most makeup brands, they'll tell you we have the best formula and we're gonna keep you fabulous all day. And while we provide that, our main focus is beauty from the inside out. We want you to be confident with the makeup off. We want you to look at the mirror with no makeup and say, oh, I am so gorgeous. And when you put the makeup on, say the same thing. I think the Greater Houston Black Chamber is awesome because it gives me these role models and these leaders to look up to who also look like me. They set such a positive example. And not only that, but they're helping uplifting youth in the community, supporting our dreams, supporting our goals. And it's so important out there to hear somebody rooting for us. I think it's awesome. So the keys to my success have been keeping my eye on the prize, like I said, staying focused on my goal. Time management is a really big one. As a teenager, you still suck juggling school and your social life, and now you're a mini CEO. And the, also the last key to my success have been surrounding myself with women who are also, you know, they have their eye on the prize and their mentors, and these women that uplift me and set a positive example for me. I'm so honored to receive this award. Like I'm at a loss for words because like I said, it means so much that somebody out there is supporting my dream and they really want to see me win. They really want to see me succeed. So I really think it's awesome. And I'm just so grateful to them for that. The Pinnacle Awards honorary chairs are an essential part of making this event possible. And the Greater Houston Black Chamber is proud to have the Astros organization and extraordinary businessman Gerald Smith serve in this role. Here's a word from Baseball Hall of Famer Reggie Jackson. I'm Reggie Jackson, member of the National Baseball Hall of Fame and special advisor to Astros owner Jim Crane. On behalf of the Astros Foundation, and Jim and Whitney Crane, I'm pleased to represent the organization at the 27th Annual Pinnacle Awards, hosted by the Greater Houston Black Chamber. Giving back to the Houston community is a core principle of the Houston Astros organization and the Greater Houston Black Chamber. And all of tonight's winners represent that and more. We're so proud of the work our business owners have done in the community throughout the pandemic. All of tonight's honorees possess sacrifice, commitment, and ingenuity. The Greater Houston Black Chamber has been a constant support to the many businesses in the Houston community, helping them not only to survive, but also thrive. The Houston Astros organization salutes all of the finalists and all of the award winners. Thank you and enjoy the rest of the evening. Businessman Gerald Smith is one of Houston's most successful entrepreneurs, so it is our honor to have him be part of this celebration. Good evening. I am Gerald Smith, the Chairman and Chief Executive Officer of Smith Graham and Company Investment Advisors and a proud lifetime member of the Greater Houston Black Chamber of Commerce. I also serve 
as one of the honorary co-chairs for this year's Pinnacle Awards. For almost two years now, our country has been in a new, if not rude, awakening as we navigate the rough waters of change brought about by the COVID-19 pandemic and the untimely death of Houstonian George Floyd. Both events have shined a light on the social and economic disparities that members of the Black community have faced far too long. While the onset of COVID-19 and the death of Mr. Floyd were tragic events, they also provided opportunity for us as a community, nation, and citizens of the world to make the changes necessary to improve the lot of our fellow man. The Greater Houston Black Chamber of Commerce is doing just that by ensuring that its membership receives the best opportunities to build, sustain, and grow its member businesses and meaningfully contribute to the legislation and policies that further the cause of Black-owned businesses. We can look forward to more Black-owned businesses creating jobs and contributing to our tax base, making for a stronger community, and building positive impacts that narrows the wealth gap that exists in the Black community. These are the reasons I decided to serve as an honorary co-chair and I invite you to work with the Chamber to continue its efforts. To the stellar businesses that are featured tonight, I offer my congratulations for a job well done. Successfully running a business takes determination and grit. You are to be commended. I look forward to a wonderful evening of celebration with you. And to our viewers, please enjoy tonight's festivities as we witness Black business excellence at its finest. Have a great evening. Good evening, I'm Carla Lane, President and CEO of Lane Staffing. As a business owner myself, I know how difficult it can be to grow when you're first starting out. That's why it's important to recognize the achievements of young companies. The Mac H. Hanna Jr. Upstart Award spotlights businesses that have been in operation for no more than two years. The winner will receive $2,500 in cash, and I am proud to fund this award each year to one deserving business owner. Now, let's get to know a little bit about our five Upstart Awards finalists. The name of our project is Grand Park Square. It's a partnership between Stratford Capital Partners, which is my investment company, and Park Street Homes, which is Kevin and Aisha Shelton's home building company. I think what's unique about Grand Park Square is that if you look at the history of real estate across the country and you go back into redlining and appraisals being short and lending misfortunes and realtors and all these other things that have kind of led to underinvested communities. For us, for me and Kevin and our team to be back in a community that more or less looks, looks like us and building a project funded by people that look like us and still trying to build a project at a price that's still affordable once again for people that, that look like us. In the game Monopoly, everybody starts at go and everybody starts with the same amount of money and the same opportunity. But that's not necessarily how the real world is. There are people that have been playing the game for generations and there are people just starting to play the game. So I think economic justice is, is equitable, an equitable playing field, whether you're just getting started or whether you've, you know, you've been playing the game for centuries. I think what it means to be an upstart finalist for, for Grant Park Square is for me, it's just, we're just getting started on the impact that, that, we can, that we can have in this community. Just to be recognized, to shine a little bit of light on what we're doing from an organization that's given so much to me, for them to just shine a light on us is just everything I could have wanted.
The name of the company is Pinch Dash Dunn, LLC. We have been in business since May of 2020, and we began as a result of the pandemic looking for something to do besides cook and eat, and we decided to write a cookbook. And it was all from a Facebook post. Please share your recipes and B, being the cook that she is, responded immediately, and we started swapping recipes, and the questions came in, hey, write a cookbook, or can I have that recipe? Please give us a cookbook. And from that, we were born. The key to, of success to Pinch Dash Dunn is, Pinch Dash Dunn is all about the people. The book was designed to help people in their homes, no matter what your skill set was in cooking, whether you are a novice or you are a skilled cooker. You have a passionate cook and you have a reluctant cook, so we combine that. We're all about community because we do not exist as an island. And so when we are given a gift, it is our responsibility to give back. Somebody poured into us, it is now our time to pour into someone else. So we will never leave anybody behind if there is something that we can do. We believe in entrepreneurship. We are small business owners. We understand the impact that COVID has had on all businesses. So why not give back? Because certainly those who patronize us have helped us tremendously and it's our time to give back. The name of my company is Busy Bee Mobile Health Clinic. We started February 24th of this year was our very first day of service. We was blessed to be able to serve two children. On that day was awesome. The services that we provide are well child checks. We do sick visits, urgent visits, hearing screens, vaccines, and we're also in the community giving COVID vaccines and COVID tests. In grad school at Prairie View A&M, the last semester we had to do a financial class and the project was to make a business plan. I made a business plan uh, with a group for a mobile health clinic. This was over eight years ago. Well, my husband's like, honey, you need to do it, you know? And I'm like, eh, I don't think, you know, I'm just, that's just not me. And he's like, but your connections you make with the community and your families are great, just do it. So, well, here comes COVID and the clinic that I was working for closed and I had been at this particular clinic for four years. So I built these relationships and the community where I was was so disenfranchised. The closure of that clinic further disenfranchised them. So I felt like I wanted to do something more for them. So I started back with the business plan and everything just fell in place. Being a finalist for the Upstart Award, I feel grateful. I'm very encouraged because I never seen myself as an entrepreneur, right? And I feel supported, right? And if I don't win, I think being a finalist has given me that push to continue to do what uh, Busy Bee is doing. So yeah, I am, like I said, I'm very grateful and encouraged. Incomparable is founded on providing advanced, affordable style, designed with excellence, inspired by experience. I got started with building Incomparable. I've had a love for watches and fashion accessories since I was five or six years old. My mom was the type to say, it was man law to never leave the house without a watch on. So where I'm from in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, your watch and your sneakers kind of spoke for you. So we were able to successfully merge the overall buying urgency when it comes to limited edition sneakers, we incorporated that into our whole culture with watches and fashion accessories while appealing to the luxurious minimalists. Consistency creates champions. Being able to meet people at a grassroots level as well as create a successful online retail platform that enhances the buying experience. We call it enhancing the incomparable life experience. I'm an individual that's a college dropout turned doctor. I'm from the inner city of Milwaukee, Wisconsin. It's one of the most segregated cities in the country. So just solely making it out to build a watch company that's in Paris, that's in Morocco, that's in Chile, that's in Trinidad, like that's something that's beyond my wildest dream. And that inspires the next individual that may have went to school and dropped out for whatever reason or didn't really have the inspiration to go to school, but they want to be an unabashed entrepreneur in their own space. That is what gives me the biggest joy.
The name of my practice is Bayou City Foot and Ankle. We essentially do foot and ankle care for the greater Houston population. I started my practice in November 2020. I practiced in New Orleans for a few years and started my own practice here in Houston. Some of the keys to success for our practice has really just been boots on the ground. Going out, meeting primary care physicians, going out within the community, whether it's a community outreach. It's really just going out and touching people, meeting people, and even in COVID times, you know, as society's kind of opened up but pulled back a little bit, that's essentially how we've based the growth of our practice. That in combination with social media, just making people aware, you know, we kind of have to take advantage of that as well. A lot of our people live on social media, so we make sure that we show what we do. 10 weeks post-op for this Achilles rupture, and uh, he's gone through uh, one month of physical therapy. How are you feeling? I'm feeling great. I can run, jump, stand on one foot. All the things all that, things I don't recommend at this stage, 10 weeks. So I opened my practice during the pandemic. You have to attack it with a lack of fear. You just can't be afraid. And um, regardless, I'm gonna, I was starting with zero patients. You know, I was essentially new to Houston as an adult. You know, so it's, you just have to do it. You got to make the plunge. You have to make that leap. You have to. You ha everybody in business has to make that leap at some point. When you look at the established practices that have six partners and that are all over the city, at, at some point they started from zero. So that's that's where I was when I started, and now that we're doing you know very consistently well, it's been you're thankful that you weren't afraid. Tonight, we are celebrating some of the best and brightest on Houston's business scene, but we can't have a real celebration without some music. Definitely cannot do that. You are in for a real treat as singer Mary Griffin gets us grooving with her dynamic performance of Aretha Franklin's classic, Rocksteady. Come on. Oh, yeah, come on. Do it. 
St. Luke's Health is honored to be a gold sponsor of this year's Pinnacle Awards. We recognize and celebrate the many valuable contributions that the Greater Houston Black Chamber of Commerce has made to advance African-American businesses within our community for more than 25 years. We understand that as community partners, our common goal is to provide services that enhance and support a healthy, diverse, and thriving community. Having representation in the federal government is not only our right, but it's necessary in order to keep the concerns of our community in the forefront. Thanks to Congresswoman Sheila Jackson Lee and Congressman Al Green for their constant support of the chamber, our members and the greater Houston community at large. Greetings and congratulations. I'm Congresswoman Sheila Jackson Lee, and you have an enormously storied history. When the chamber was first organized in 1935, it brought together prominent citizens to ensure that posterity was in the black community, that people were brought together that can do good. And here you are, continuing to do good in all of those years. I'm excited about participating tonight, and I'm excited about the Greater Houston Black Chamber and these outstanding achievement awards in the Pinnacle Awards. I'm excited about saying thank you to small businesses who paved the pathway and are setting up new ideas, new goals, and yes, pioneering and being courageous. Maya Angelou said the greatest virtue was courage because no other virtues could be established without first having courage. As businesses starting up, you have had courage. In the backdrop of the pandemic and COVID-19, we've had some insurmountable challenges, but here you are tonight being celebrated for your outstanding leadership. Please do this for me. As I conclude my remarks this evening, so excited about this wonderful celebration, bring someone along, lift someone up the mountain, bring someone over the waters, ensure that as you succeed, you provide the helping hand that this great chamber is helping every day. May you continue to be reminded that an injustice anywhere is a justice everywhere, and you remind it as well, if you will, that you stand in a country whose greatness is based on you. Congratulations again. God bless all of you. Have a wonderful evening and God bless the United States of America. Hello friends. Please allow me to thank the Greater Houston Black Chamber for inviting me to this year's celebration of black business excellence. The Greater Houston Black Chamber is the second oldest black chamber of commerce in our nation, supporting black businesses in Houston for more than 85 years. As the pandemic has unfortunately demonstrated, communities of color and minority businesses suffer disproportionately during hard times. During the pandemic, the National Bureau of Economic Research estimated that from February to April of 2020, 41% of Black-owned businesses closed, many more than the 17% of white-owned businesses that closed during the same period of time. Chief among the many reasons for the disparity are access to capital and mentorship. This is why I commend your work to support our community by supporting black businesses. This is also why I am pleased that the pandemic relief packages included legislation to bring billions of dollars to bear on the disparities in capital for minority owned businesses. Again, thank you for inviting me to this conference and thank you to all of the staff that made this event possible. In the words of another Al Green, let's stay together for the good times. Good evening. My name is Jamila Wenzi, co-chair of the 27th Annual Pinnacle Awards. And on behalf of myself and co-chair Dale Lockett, I want to welcome you to this evening's celebration. It has been my immense pleasure to help organize this year's event because I've been able to witness firsthand the incredible work, resilience, and dedication of some of the greatest business owners in Houston. When my husband and I won the Pinnacle Award last year for our brokerage, Remax Legacy Living, Remax Legacy we were ecstatic Remax to receive class. such an honor and be listed among other great entrepreneurs recognized with this award. In organizing this event, it is our hope that all of Houston and even those outside of our city 
will become familiar with and support these amazing businesses profiled tonight. Although we will only announce five Pinnacle winners and one Upstart winner, every business represented tonight is deserving of honor. Please enjoy the rest of the evening. Now we have come to the point in our program where we introduce you to the Pinnacle Award finalist. Of all the many applicants for this coveted award, the Pinnacle Committee selected these 10 finalists that embody resilience, ingenuity, creativity, and most of all, excellence. Let's meet the Pinnacle Award finalists, starting with Camelia Elise, Carrie Business Solutions, and Park Street Homes. Camelia Elise is a multifaceted natural skincare and spa company. So I have a brick and mortar spa in Third Ward. We are actually opening a second one in two months in the uh, Central Houston area as well. We've also developed natural skincare products that are specifically for people who struggle with ingrown hairs, razor bumps, and cellulite. So we have some um, daily care products as well as specialized skincare products. And then I have one of the largest nationwide um, beauty training academies in the country. In general, being an entrepreneur means that you have to be resilient. There will always be unseen factors or unseen problems that come your way. You can't plan for every problem. So it's just been the opportunity to be innovative, think outside the box, and find ways to grow your business in avenues you may not have thought of before. And so we came out of 2020 making more money and doing better than we did in 2019. What brings me the most pride is that with our academy specifically, I am able to empower other entrepreneurs and give them the tools that they need to successfully launch their business. But on a personal note, as a business owner, um, I actually lost my mom to this pandemic. So just knowing that you know, the company is still growing. I'm making her proud. And even, you know, being able to sit here to talk about the Pinnacle Award, those are things that just bring pride to me because I know that she's watching and she's smiling. Carrie Business Solutions is the name of our company. It's a full base accounting, tax, and business solutions firm. Technically, I started 17 years ago and we've got married eight years ago and from that he came in with the nonprofit and management and marketing side so it was a natural fit for the accounting business solutions side. I worked in corporate America then I did consulting for Rice University and then after that I decided to step out on my own so pre-pandemic was our first full year full-time in operation in 2019. And we just kind of brought both of our backgrounds together and utilized all of our professional experience to continue to build our services and offerings at Carry Business Solutions. Yeah. Last year was an amazing year for us. Being a small business owner and being self-employed, it's hard to expand, acquire property, buy a home, but um, we make that happen for our clients. So that's the thing that I'm most proud of, their success. When my clients purchased their first home after thinking that they couldn't because they had solid financials, when they also like expand and get another franchise because we had solid financials. So those things like keep us going, I, I believe for sure, that's the thing that I'm oh, most proud of. Right. Yeah. Absolutely, I think that's it. Uh, thinking about uh, how many people have gained additional success through the services that we provide. I think that's what we're most proud of. And just our ability, like I said, to balance everything, work-life balance and continue mm -hmm. to move forward. Yeah, absolutely. When we got together, our desire was to live in the city. And honestly, there was no homes in the city where I grew up that she would be willing to live in. So we had to build housing for families that look very much like us because we were forced to kind of go a little bit further south to find a place to call home. At the time that we started Park Street, we were creating housing for young professionals, young families who didn't want to fight that traffic coming into the city. And what it's grown into now is a production builder that will scale across the board. 
So if there was anything that I feel like we're most proud of, it's, it's the contribution that we've made to the community reserve. And it's so easy to get caught up in your day to day and you don't realize that the impact you can have of just the fact that other people are going through the same thing that you're going through, whether it's access to capital or access to opportunities or figuring other things out, right? So it's truly a community effort to be in business, to stay in business. I think being a finalist means exactly what it says. It means that, that there is a pinnacle. And I don't think that we've reached the top. We have so much more growth to go. However, we've been acknowledged by our community that says our business is pinnacle worthy. It makes us pinnacle worthy. Hi. I am Kyra R. Hardwick, Managing Consultant at The Kyra Company, and I am incredibly honored to introduce the new Greater Houston Black Chamber Pinnacle Society. For 27 years, the Greater Houston Black Chamber has celebrated and honored some of the best Black-owned businesses in Houston. These companies exemplify our culture, ingenuity, and resilience. They are the pillars of our community and represent the rich legacy we continue to build. This is an open invitation for all past and current Pinnacle Award winners to join an elite group of business owners right here in the city of Houston to continue networking, supporting one another, and making a huge impact on our local economy. Pinnacle alumni must be in good standing with the Greater Houston Black Chamber to join. We look forward to welcoming tonight's winners into the fold of the new Greater Houston Black Chamber Pinnacle Society. Have a great evening. We can definitely see why those companies were selected as finalists. And the next three are just as great. Let's check out Fresh Tech Solutions, Sisters and More, and Optimize Health. The name of my company is Fresh Tech Solutions. We've been in business for four and a half years now. Fresh Tech is a tech firm specializing in mobile app development. We do any kind of technology as far as websites, mobile apps, software development, enterprise software, anything in that, in that tech space we can cover. So I started actually at the Great Prairie View A&M University. I was a computer engineering major there, uh, so I kind of got my foot into coding. Actually, both of my parents used to work for IBM, so I've been in this life my whole life, really. I started grad school at UTSA and got recruited by a company called Tata Consultancy Services, which is the largest technology firm in the world. I was a software engineer for them for five years and realized that, you know, I'm doing apps for, for this company. I can do apps for myself. So I took that leap in 2016. Welcome to Fresh Tech Solutions, where we do all things tech and all things fresh. Hey. On that startup side, somebody comes to us with an idea, a business, you know, tech startup. We're not getting funded as African Americans. And that's pretty much what we base this whole deck launch pitch deck thing off of. We want to be able to give access to funds. Um, so we have a pool of investors that, you know, we send all of our pitch deck clients to. I think it's very, very hard for, for us to get funding. And that's pretty much the reason why we fail so much as a, as a whole. Uh, is capital, access to capital. Um, so, you know, we're trying to do our part by, by eliminating that gap and bringing access uh, to these African-American founders and African-American businesses. We're Sisters and More, LLC. We've been in business now six? Since 2016, six we've been in operation. Yeah, and so we um, formed our Smoothie King franchise in 2018. And so we've been in operation for about two and a half years now. I'm the older sister, so I always ask her, what do you want to do with your life? And <laughs> at that point in time, I was like, oh, well, nothing. Like, I'm, I'm doing great. I'm a paralegal. I'm working in the corporate world. Like, money's good. Like, I don't want to do anything. Like, I'm, I'm living the dream right now. Until one day, that dream changed. And when she asked me that question, I was like, I want to open up a Smoothie King. And she was just like, let's do it. For us to be finalists, it means a lot. We also grew up with a speech impediment called a stutter. And I always, <laughs> I always come back to this because I, I think it also helps give us drive and to give kids hope and minority women hope that deal with stuttering, deal with overcoming the fear of public speaking, being in front of the cameras, being in front of the light. So, you know, getting this award for us is, is bigger than us. 
And that's um, kind of what we mean too um, when we talk about resilient. Like because we have a speech impediment, we've had to overcome so many obstacles in life that people take for granted every day. So every day we have to wake up with a speech impediment. So every day it's about going out there and not allowing it to control our lives. The name of my business is Optimize Health, LLC. We've been up and operating since 2016. I love my business. We focus on health, wellness, preventive screenings for small businesses, schools, institutions, and also other facilities within our area. And we're mobile. That's our key niche. We're mobile. We come to you. We focus on safety, prevention, disease management. So we do physical exams for employees. Also, we do sports physicals for youth, and we also provide virtual visits for our clients that we serve. I love being a nurse, and I think it started from when I was a young girl. I was helping my grandmother who, we, who lived with us with her diabetes. I found myself at the age of eight or nine helping her with cleaning peg tubes, and I was like, hey, I like this. I enjoy this. I enjoy helping them, serving them to keep them uh, alive, long, and healthy. I love seeing people go from one point of their health or not knowing to prevention, to managing their blood pressure, their diabetes, hypertension, to recognizing things that they may not have known before. So that's my specialty, that's my passion, to help you get to your best self. Because when we're our best self, when I help you to be your best self, you're, out, you're able to go out to serve your family, your friends, your clients in the best way possible. Because we know true health is wealth. Now let's get to know our last group of finalists, Coach Cam, Deanna Michelle Inc., Road Docs, and the Sports and Wellness Doc. The name of my business is Coach Cam, named after myself, ironically. So we've been in business for a little over a decade, about 12 years. We started initially uh, as an after-school service provider, and then primarily with me as a public speaker, which then evolved into curriculum, course writing, and then just kind of general consulting services. Very early in my, I guess, professional career, I worked for the Texans, and the organization came around, a nonprofit, that really spoke to me, and they were launching a local chapter here, and they were looking for folks who were, you know, comfortable speaking in public with a very strong sports background so really just sharing my gift came as an opportunity just to be able to speak about you know the impact that sports and athletics has had in my life but more importantly how we can use that as a as an athletic and educational system to change action in, on the playground as well as uh, in the classroom when you think about the impact that we can have on our economy in you know as an entrepreneur and in the business sector we almost have responsibility to give back to serve in our community as well i think that's how we create deep lasting impact you know the secrets to my success have really been failing if i'm transparent right so i think that we know that uh the stats about small businesses small black businesses and their access to capital and so you know while that has definitely been a hamstring or maybe has slowed my acceleration it's really been a blessing in disguise and so you know to be able to have to try and fail try and fail with your own capital is an amazing teacher one the second thing is really just you know the what i've learned in athletics and you know the best play is not to quit to give to continue to chop that wood every single day until you master your craft The name of my company is Deanna Michelle Inc. I've been in business since September the 4th, 2014, so about seven years. And we provide program management, portfolio management, and project management to Fortune 500 companies to help deliver technology initiatives that enable value and unlock capabilities to the customers of those companies. We have no glass ceilings, we have no bureaucracy. It's all about delivering the services based upon our client's vision and just help really speak at various levels so that the vision of uh, stakeholders or sponsors for multi-million dollar initiatives are well translated and the teams that actually deliver upon those initiatives feel comfortable and everybody feels proud that they're heading in the same direction and having a great time while doing so. I was surprised when I received a, hey, you've been nominated. I'm like, wow, someone thought enough of me. And so that, that in itself is an honor. And I don't do what I do for notoriety. I do what I do truly because I love it. And I'm so about building 
a legacy for our community and a legacy for my family. Being recognized as a finalist amongst a lot of people that put in the work, entrepreneurs that put in the work just like I do, is an honor. My company name is Rodox. I've been in business now for seven years and we offer telemedicine and primary care services. Everyone's talking about telemedicine now, but I got my start back in 2014 before it was really popular. I thought it would be a great opportunity to have better work-life balance by offering video appointments to my patients. I do do marketing and advertising like other companies, but my business has grown because I still have some of the same patients I had in 2014 who refer their friends to me, their family members to me, who know my family and maintain maintaining those relationships, but also relationships with my mentors, my advisors, the corporations we work with. So I think if you do good business and have good relationships, then you will succeed eventually. Why it's important to me to support black businesses is because as a business owner, I know that we are often overlooked. In healthcare, in other industries, you can be talented, you can have all the skills, you can come up with it first, and you will be overlooked by others. So it's important to me that we're not overlooking ourselves and overlooking our own. Getting that notification that I'm a finalist is just like, wow, like you have been doing the work and you're seen. Oftentimes, black women are not seen. Like we are fabulous. We are black girl magic, we're everything, but often we're not seen. And so it's that acknowledgement, like we see you, we see your work, we see what you're doing. That means a lot to me. The Sports and Wellness Doc is a multidisciplinary chiropractic practice. We offer services from chiropractic adjustments to dry needling, cupping, hyperbaric oxygen therapy. We also offer Botox, chemical pills, dermal fillers, IV hydration, feminine wellness, and weight loss. We've been in business for over five years and we service everyone from diaper to diaper. After I finished chiropractic school, nursing was always in my mind, but I kind of left it alone and then I went back to it and I'm like, okay, if you're gonna keep on going and wasting your time going to these sessions, you may as well just go ahead and apply. I applied for nursing school and then I ended up opening my practice June of 2016. September of 2016, I got the acceptance letter for nursing school. So I was like, oh God, how are we gonna do this? But it all worked out perfect. My practice was kind of slow for a little bit. I thrived and it allowed me to be able to pay for me to go to nursing school out of pocket. I worked for two jobs and ran my practice until I could get on my own feet. And then now I'm working on my master's in nursing, become a nurse practitioner so that I can expand my scope of practice to be able to offer more services and help more people. The Greater Houston Black Chamber has been amazing when it comes to my business because there's been so many different networking opportunities, especially the women's breakfast that they were um, having prior to COVID. I made so many great relationships with so many women and now we work together, we network and collaborate. And that's another thing, when it comes to being a business owner, you have to be willing to network Work and collaborate whether they're in the same field as you or whether you're in completely opposite fields because you never know how you can help someone else. One aspect of the Greater Houston Black Chamber is its foundation, which provides opportunities for aspiring entrepreneurs, youth, and professionals. Let's hear from Foundation Chair Courtney Johnson Rose. Good evening. I'm Courtney Johnson Rose, Chair of the Board of the Greater Houston Black Chamber Foundation. And on behalf of our Foundation Board, I want to congratulate all of tonight's Community Award honorees, as well as the Pinnacle and Upstart Award finalists. The last two years have been extremely challenging for Black-owned businesses, and I want to acknowledge the tough sacrifices and great work that it takes to keep the doors of your business open and to thrive in the community. The GHBC Foundation is a 501c3 not-for-profit organization that serves as the philanthropic arm of the Chamber. The goals of the foundation are to financially support the initiatives of the chamber, support efforts to train and develop the next generation of black entrepreneurs, and to support programs that improve the black community in the greater Houston area.
As we take this time to celebrate the success of Black-owned businesses in Houston, I encourage you to make a financial donation to the foundation, which goes directly towards supporting Black businesses, young professionals, and students. You can make a tax-deductible donation by visiting the GHBC website at ghbcc.com. Thank you for tuning in tonight and celebrating with us. Enjoy the rest of the evening. The Greater Houston Black Chamber was founded in 1935 for the purpose of promoting the civic, economic, industrial, agricultural, and social welfare of Houston residents. Part of its vision was to encourage a larger patronage of black enterprises and practical education to stimulate better business and develop a better relationship between racial groups. Back then, issues such as poll taxes, fair housing, and employment practices and rations during war were top priorities for the chamber. The organization provided platforms for national leaders, partnered with government programs, and held events such as business forums in support of the African American community. The Greater Houston Black Chamber is really um, an unsung treasure in our community. And it came from the ideas of people decades ago when it was the Houston Negro Chamber of Commerce to the Houston Citizens Chamber of Commerce to the Greater Houston Black Chamber of Commerce. In all of those ways, what it has done was serve to bolster opportunities for African Americans in business. I don't think there's any other organization in this city, whether it's city, county, state, uh, affirmative action, uh, community action, nobody's had the kind of uh, uh, impact on black business in this city other than the chamber. Uh, I think it has been vigilant. It has been there all the time, unforgiving in its, uh, uh, in its vision. Now in 2020, the chamber continues to exercise its influence in local, state, and national civic and social issues, economic empowerment, and the ongoing fight for equality for black Americans. Over the years, the GHBC and its foundation have served as a beacon of light for entrepreneurs in our community and as a resource to help train the next generation of black leaders. We have helped thousands of businesses grow and thrive, create jobs and contribute to the economic fabric of Houston and its surrounding areas. Our programming, access to a vast network of corporate leaders and professionals, and assistance with contracting opportunities have helped Black-owned businesses thrive. The Chamber, through its efforts, have been able to show us how to proceed, how to grow our businesses, uh, how to be successful in running those businesses, uh, how to look at the future, how to get a balance between life uh, lessons and, and business lessons. And so we've been able to uh, put together, I think, a relatively uh, important part of this community, the black business communities continue to grow. I'd like to say congratulations to the Greater Houston Black Chamber. You have become everything that those individuals years and years and years and years ago in the prior century thought that an organization could be to help African Americans, persons of African descent in our city and in our nation. Thank you for all that you're doing. Thank you for helping businesses along the way. Thank you for nurturing individuals who have the dream to become business owners. Thank you so much and congratulations on this wonderful event and your wonderful future that is ahead of you and you're only going to become better. As we look toward the future, our goal is to strengthen the power of the dollar in the black community and to help African Americans understand amass and wield our power for the betterment of our experience in this nation. All right, this is the moment we've all been waiting for, the announcement of the winners. That's right. And out of the five Upstart Award finalists, we have one winner who will receive $2,500. And that winner is Grand Park Square. Congratulations. You know, it's just, it's an honor to be nominated. You know, I'm very happy that, that we won. Um, I wanna say thank you to the Greater Houston Black Chamber. I wanna say thank you to Kevin and Aisha Shelton and the Park Street team. 
I want to say thank you to Courtney Johnson Rose, Christopher Fallon, uh, Ron Winden Jr. Um, I definitely want to say thank you to my dad for supporting me, and thank you to my wife Jessica, and say hello to my two sons, uh, Junius the Fifth and Jason. Now we're going to announce the five winners of this year's Pinnacle Awards and our Pinnacle Rising Star Award winner. Our first Pinnacle Award winner is Camelia Elise. I am just so excited and thankful for this award. I first want to say it's such a blessing and thank you to my team. I could not be here without the Camelia Elise team, uh, my family who is constantly supporting me um, as well as the chamber. Thank you so much for all the support you've given us through the years as we have grown this business. Um, and then lastly, I just wanna say thank you to my mom. I know that she's smiling down and uh, proud to see this moment. So I appreciate it, thank you. Our next Pinnacle Award winner is Carrie Business Solutions. We would like to thank the Greater Houston Black Chamber for this amazing honor and giving us the Pinnacle Award. More importantly, we'd like to thank our clients for trusting us with their livelihood. This is such an amazing honor. We thank you so much and we appreciate you. Thank you. Our next Pinnacle Award winner is Park Street Homes. Wow, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you to the Greater Houston Black Chamber of Commerce. Thank our parents. Yep our family, the community, our investors. Thank you all for the opportunity, but thank you for choosing us. Thank you to all our partners, everybody who supported us. Uh, we have a long way to go and we're so thankful to be here uh, celebrating this award with you guys. And we look forward to not only um, being the pinnacle that you've chose us to be, but going forward and shining that light on the whole community. The next pinnacle award winner is Fresh Tech Solutions. First, I want to thank my Lord and Savior and all of those beautiful people that are always constantly praying for me. Um, I especially want to thank my team, Sydney, Dr. Doug, and Nick. If it wasn't for you guys buying into the vision and believing in the dream, we would not be here. So I really, really appreciate the team um, and just stay fresh. And we have one more Pinnacle Award winner to announce. And the last Pinnacle Award winner of the evening is Sisters and More. I want to say first, thank you to the Houston Black Chamber of Commerce for this award. Thank you to God for uh, watching over us throughout this journey. And thank you to our, our staff and um, our support system and our team for being behind us throughout this journey as well. Thanks, Mom and Dad, and thanks, family. We couldn't have done it without y'all either. Grateful. Our last award of the evening is the Pinnacle Rising Star Award. This award was created to honor a Pinnacle finalist who has been in business at least three years, who has shown exceptional growth and business leadership. And the winner is Coach Cam. I'd like to thank the Greater Houston Black Chamber for receiving this award. The Pinnacle Award does mean the world to me. It really is a, a standard that I hold myself uh, very much high to and I wanna thank you for um, receiving it. I'd like to take a second to thank my beautiful wife, Angie, and the kids. Thank you for the support all these years. Thank you for um, the understanding for the, the work trips and just the time away from family in order to build business. I really do appreciate that. I'd like to take a second to thank my mom and my family, my father, my brother, everybody else. Obviously, I'd like to take a second to thank God for his abilities and what he's entrusted in me. But most importantly, I'd like to take a second to stop and say thank you to Houston. Houston has certainly raised me. It's made me the person I am from South Park to the University of Houston to my, um, my upbringing and where I live now. I thank you for the opportunity to serve and to lead. Congratulations to all the honorees, finalists and winners tonight. Thank you all for tuning in to the 27th annual Pinnacle Awards. For more information about the Greater Houston Black Chamber, visit ghbcc.com. Thanks for joining us. We will close out tonight's show with another performance from the amazing Mary Griffin. Enjoy and have a good night. Let me hear you say, let me hear you say, my name is love, love, my 
name is love. Do this little album. 